Um, my wife and I says that I love the internet a little bit more than her. Uh, I disagree, but we can talk with her about that. Um, and anyway, I've uh, I've been employed by the internet essentially for the last six years. I started a web design company, uh, moved to another one, and I do a lot of differently strategy development, application development. Uh, Working with just you know a bunch of different people trying to figure out what they really want to do. So I figured I'd talk today about how you can kind of figure out what your role with the internet is. Um, the guy, uh, the guy that runs uh, runs Google right now, uh, Eric Schmidt's his name. He has, he has a little quote for me. He said he got really into the internet. He was really drawn into the internet because of the open growth and just being able to create new things. It's Seems pretty similar. To that uh, or that that model feels really similar to the same as well, familiar to uh, the Evolve crew again. Where you're just wanting to change, you're wanting to progress, you're wanting to create something new. But with something like the internet, it's so vast. It's hard to figure out what can we do. It's filled in clutter. It's filled with clutter. It's filled with so many distractions. So much shit going on all the time. Part of my language, but there's so much stuff going on all the time that it's hard to sift through and figure out what is really relevant, what's really, really going to hit home for you. And the other thing about the internet is that there's so many different levels of how you can use the internet. And I feel that you know when I look at my own life, I I, I sometimes struggle with like you know who am I? What am I doing here? What's my purpose? What are my goals? And if I can't even figure that out for myself, how can I figure out what my goals and what my purpose is with the internet? Or what is the purpose and the goal of the internet itself? So I wanted to talk a little bit about how we can define what our roles are with the internet. I don't need to bore anybody here. Uh, you can go for a smoke if you don't hear me. Uh, I, I am a big passion. I really love to act as well, by the way. But what I want to kind of propose is the internet is a, it's just a tool. And it's something that we can all use, regardless of who you are, what position you hold with the internet. When you can figure out how you can use a tool, then you can figure out what you're actually going to be able to do, how you can make a change, how you can make a difference, how you can progress with it, as opposed to just consume. I really like that what James was saying earlier about there's so much consuming that it's almost, uh, you know, you're disregarding this information. It's just, just consuming, consuming. And it's not so much that, well, I don't want people to consume essentially. I want people to digest the information. I want people to digest that information so I can feel it better. So it will resonate within me and it will also resonate within you. But to be able to do that, we need to figure out what our role is with the internet. So I'm going to go over a few different profiles that you can fit into with the internet. The first is there's a creator. Uh, the creator of the internet is uh, someone that's creating a blog, someone that's making YouTube videos, someone that's frequently posting on Facebook, someone that's making a lot of Twitter feeds, you know, just, just contributing, making a lot of stuff happen on the internet. That's the creator. So sometimes I wear the creator hat. I wear the hat of going on the internet, building websites for people, building websites for myself, um, you know, making new stuff happen on social media, creating events. Uh, you know, that, that's the role of the creator. So sometimes I fit into the creator. You may also as well. Kind of a step down, and this isn't like a ladder of hierarchy or anything like that. It's just, it's just, it's just different levels. Um, the next step down is the critic. So the critic is someone that is is retweet we, we oh my god Twitter's gonna be the death of me retweeting shit. <laughs> Dumb and messy and shit. At any rate, retweeting, reposting information, uh, pushing out you know social uh, bookmarks that you may have placed. Uh, it is something that you have a strong opinion on, but you don't necessarily create it. So it's, it's kind of like a news agency. They don't exactly create the news. They do to an extent because they'll, you know, they'll, they'll take it, they'll shape shift it, and they'll throw it back in our faces. But it, it's someone that has a, a sincere opinion that wants to be heard. Um, that's the critic. Collector. This is someone that is like an, arch uh, like an archive. Someone that's you know, digging up a ton of information and storing it for later. Uh, the, there's a friend of mine at Oolong that I, I see behind his computer all the time, and he is just sitting there archiving and archiving and archiving. He's pulling out 
blueprints of how to make your own house. He's figuring out how he can filter his own water. He's figuring out, you know, all these crazy, simple little things. And he's bookmarking it so he can use it in a future reference. He can build his own library, essentially, on his computer, online or offline. And how convenient that you can now share that with absolutely everybody that's around you. It's, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, it's also something that can be used maliciously, which we've heard a decent amount about tonight. But, uh, you know, I try not to focus on that because, well, I just don't. Um, there's, uh, the, the, there's next, after the collector, uh, there's the joiner. This is the person who is just, you know, browsing around Facebook, browsing around Twitter, joining in, following some people, taking a look and reading this information, uh, maybe digesting it a little bit, but not really contributing back, not really posting information back, not really talking with anybody about it. Uh, so this is the joiner. Uh, you then go down one more step and you've got the spectator. I don't know if you go down a step, sorry, you just, you, there's next the spectator. The spectator is the person who's just there. They're, they're like the peeping Tom kind of of the internet. Uh, <laughs> take that as, with a grain of salt, please. That's kind of crazy, I know. Um, but it's just someone that's just, you know, just like picking out little pieces of information, uh, chewing on it a little bit, uh, but again, really not pushing back information to anybody else. And then there's an inactive user. This is someone that can do a few searches, someone that uses their email, uh, someone just does simple things with it. So what, what I challenge everyone in here to do is just to figure out where you stand with your used to the internet. And this may sound a little strange, but I, didn't, I really didn't know where I stood with the internet six years ago. I had no idea that I could exclusively rely on developing for the internet to you know, secure myself financially, uh, to create new things that I'm really passionate about, to help market and advertise different things that I really enjoy. And it's, it's, you know, it's a fantastic environment for it. But I just didn't know that I was a bit of everything. I, need to, I needed to learn that when it's time for me to put on my creator hat, then I sit down and I focus on my creative areas. When it's time for me to be the collective, then it's time for me to sit down and archive that information. I can't try and manage all of these different hats at the same time. It's, it's kind of like having a boss over top of you that's micromanaging everything that you're working through. I, I really don't know a single soul that likes that. I know people that are instilled with the knowledge and then, you know, they can do as they wish with it. So if I know my own profile, if I know where I stand with the internet, then I can figure out how I can contribute to it. Whenever I talk, I get a little shaky. It's like partial nervous, partial shake. <laughs> okay. So once you kind of figure out what your, role, what your role is with the internet, how you fit into it, it's time to just figure out your goals with it. Now I'm not going to tell you how to figure out your goals, that's something you can figure out on your own. But, you know, it, it, there, there's simple things. When I'm trying to figure out my goals, I think about what am I looking to achieve? What am I trying to do out of this? A, for example, for a ball recruit, am I trying to get a bunch of people up so I can share information? Sounds, sounds pretty good, sounds like a goal. Uh, am I trying to publicize this to a lot of different people in Calgary? Probably, that sounds like a pretty good goal. Uh, you know, who are my audiences that I want to address this to? Not so much a goal, but it can tie into it. So once you understand your profile with the internet, if you can highlight a certain number of different goals that you have for yourself, you'll be able to have, or at least start to formulate a plan for how you're going to approach your, your use of the internet. And in this day and age, when you're being bombarded with the digital media constantly, it's, it's frustrating as hell to try and get something done online. But if you have a goal and you have a clear purpose of what you're doing and you understand your goal, then it's not that difficult. You can jump behind the computer and simply do whatever you want and move forward. So now that we have a bunch of goals, just assume that you formulated some goals, you know your profile had and where you're kind of sitting in certain areas. Got your goals now. Create a plan. It's, it, this is not it, it's not rocket science by any means, but just create a plan. Think through all of your different areas of how you want to approach your your internet usage. 
the most simple plan that I can put out here, and I, I use this for a lot of different social media campaigns, trying to plan out how people are going to, you know, promote an idea better or to, uh, you know, change people's minds on a certain issue or topic. Um, and, and it just goes like this. It, you, first, you start off with a call and you have a listing of all of your goals. And this is typically for a certain item of interest. So say you're sitting down and you have to do a research paper. Your goals are probably going to be, you know, your, your three main points of the essay or what, whatever you're trying to cover in your essay or this report. You then move on to your audience. And if you're wearing the contributor hat, or if you're wearing the uh, creator hat, sorry, this is going to be who am I marketing to? Who am I pushing this information to? Who am I trying to optimize any content or th this information for? Now, if I'm a collector or if I'm someone, you know, some, someone of like a joiner, I'm going to be thinking about what am I looking for? What group am I looking for? Who am I actually searching for? Are they using Facebook to talk about this information? Are they using Twitter to talk about this information? Are they using Mata? Are they, what network are they using? You know, it, because there's so many different social media platforms that are out there nowadays, or so many different social networks, sorry, that are available to us that it's hard to figure out what we really want. It's even hard to figure out how you want to interact with them because they all have different cultures and communities that are driving them. So if you can figure out what your audience is, you'll be able to figure out who you're going to be talking to or who you're going to be directly asking questions to. So I can see this being highly relevant for something like hackerspace because you know, you've got an idea, you want to go in, you want to contribute or you want to have someone help you contribute, but if you don't know who you're asking for or if you don't know what you need, it, it's going to be impossible to accomplish it. So highlight your audience, figure out what you're going for. Then you can figure out what tools you're going to be using. Now, tools on the internet is, again, a big word. You've got blogging platforms, so something like WordPress. You've got, uh, you've got different micro-websites platforms. You've got Twitter, you've got social media networks. So you've got uh, Wikipedia pages or wiki, wikis that you can create. Uh, you know, there's so many different things that you can use to effectively communicate your, to your audience. But it's important to figure out what's the most appropriate because if you're trying to communicate with someone on your terms, it usually doesn't work out that well. But if I was to sit down with any of you and then try and communicate or talk with you on your terms, it's going to be a lot easier for us to get along. It's the same with working with the internet. You have to find your niche. You have to find who you're going for and how you're working directly and with an audience so you can get the most out of what you're going for. Next is your message. Just figuring out what you're trying to look for, or what you're trying to create out there. Try and figure out, is it out there, if you're the creator? Who else is talking about this kind of information, and what can I learn from them? Or if you're a consumer, or you're a joiner, sorry, then you're more, what are the messages that are out there that I can be learning from? We then move over to, what's your timeline? Now, this is kind of more of a professional approach. Timeline doesn't always apply so much in, with everyone else, uh, certainly not everyone else. It doesn't so much apply personally all the time. But I, I'm going to say, I feel that that may be something that I need to work on. It may be something that all of us need to work on. Because if we don't have a frame of mind, if we don't have a time frame of what we're trying to get something accomplished by, how are you going to get it accomplished? If, you, if you're not pushing for you know, a certain milestone to get it done, it's just not going to get done because you're not accountable to yourself, you're not accountable to others, you're not accountable to your own word. It's just not going to happen. So it's just essentially a challenge to set up a timeline for what you're trying to accomplish. Now when you're working with you know, university paper or something like that, you're given a timeline. So it, it's not hard to work with that framework. But for the most part, come up with a timeline for it. And then how many resources, or what resources do you have that you can allocate to doing or performing your tasks online? So do you have a group of 50 people that are able to contribute and to challenge ideas, to keep moving forward? Is it just yourself? Is it just yourself behind your computer that can you know, go on and write up a blog entry or, or contribute to your Facebook page? It, you know, the, there's a wide variety of resources that you have, but if you can mark them down, you'll be able to figure out how much you're actually willing to do within a given set of time, what your goals are, who you're trying to get this out to, and what your message is. That's, that's the entire scheme of what you're trying to convey to anybody. 
And this applies for any communication tactic. When you're, you're talking with you know, a friend in, uh, in, in a tea house, or if you're talking with a thousand people on a social network, it's, it's the same thing. So once you have a plan, you can just, this isn't very complicated either. Actually, nothing is that I ever talk about is, but you can continue your journey. You can continue figuring out what it is that you're looking for. But now you have a purpose. Now you have an understanding of where you sit, of how you're going to try and change the internet, how you're going to try and put your hand into the internet's pocket, which is essentially infinite at this moment, and how you can get back portions of that infinite energy, which is huge. It, you can learn, you can go on Wikipedia, and I'm sure everyone knows, you can learn your, until your brain's exploding, until you're vomiting out of your face, because there's so much information to digest on there. But that's the beauty of it. And the thing with Wikipedia, or Wiki, or something like that, is that it's not only one person that's saying this is how it is, it's everyone saying this is how it is. So when we come into, you know, just say theoretically you're creating a framework. You're creating a thing, a, a framework for progressing, for all of us to work, to find something together, to move it forward. Nowadays, you can set up a wiki page for whatever, you, whatever purpose your goal is within an hour. You can do it for under $150 for a year. And you can have this stuff broadcasted and publicized to the entire world. And you can also have the entire world contribute on your ideas. Now, you can apply the same idea, but tweak it a little bit with social media. You can put your voice out there, and you can be heard by the entire networks of people, but you can also have them critique on you, and they can, have you, they can build on you. So you can use all of the internet for very, very tactical things, and you can really grow and stretch yourself as a person, and not only as a person, but as an organization, or as a group, or whatever you want. You can really stretch a lot with the internet. You just have to have a lot of faith in it. And again, you also have to love it. You have to have a love for openness. You, you really have to be able to give away. And you have to be able to say, you know what? I don't care if people want my information. I, it sucks. I know it sucks. And it's a currency for so many different organizations. But, you know, on, on Facebook, I'm like 78. No one knows how old I am. You know, on Facebook, I have like a five-year-old email account. So I'm giving away information, but I'm giving away false information. <laughs> it's, it doesn't take rocket science to fool some people, but you can, and you still you still can. So it's um, so yeah. At any rate, I love the internet. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you've got ideas that you want to start creating for the internet, if you have, if you want to know how to set up a Wikipedia page, if you want to know how to, you know, start forming a blog, uh, you know, anything, just uh, feel free to give me a call or to just to chat. I am open. Any questions? Thank you.